Welcome back to our continuing coverage here on CBC News Network. You know some of the reasons the fire has been so intense in the Fort McMurray area. It was hot, it was windy, it was dry, and there was a lot of fuel, much of this dry forest uh, around us right now. Johanna Wagstaff got a closer look at just what kind of fuel there was for this fire. I'm here in the forest between Lac La Biche and Fort McMurray, and I wanted to give you a sense just how dry conditions are and just how explosive the fire situation is. We're actually in the boreal forest. That's the forest north of the more temperate and green uh, forests of southern North America and just below the tundra of North America. So this forested area generally happens around the 55th parallel, which is where we are right now. The big difference uh, in a boreal forest is the coniferous trees, and you can see all of these evergreens behind me, some of them growing up to 30 meters. This is very dangerous for fire, uh, fire conditions. Take a look at the ground behind me. It is littered with broken branches, uh, dry peat and moss, just a lot of fuel buildup because this forest hasn't seen a fire for decades. And the boreal forest actually relies on forest fires to regenerate itself. So when you get an area that hasn't seen a fire for so long, it becomes explosive. Just take a look at some of the, the fuel that we're looking at. This is so dry and brittle. You can see how it wouldn't take much for this to catch on fire very quickly and uh, for a fire to become uncontrollable very quickly. I want to show you something else when it comes to these evergreens. Uh, the pine cones themselves, uh, the pine cones of these trees are actually designed to catch on fire. They're covered in a resin and when the fire ignites that it burns the resin away and the, the seeds in the pine cone are actually released and that's how these uh, trees regenerate so they need the wildfires uh, to start that cycle so you don't get this kind of buildup. I want to show you one more kind of tree. Off in the distance you can see that white uh, pop looking tree that's an aspen tree and you may have heard reports of trees actually exploding it has been so dry here uh, through the past few months so the gases inside that tree literally expanded and exploded when that very intense fire got going so again a lot of fuel here to burn some good rain really helps the situation, but what you really need is a fire to regenerate that process and that is a, a concern across much of northern Canada. Well, Johanna joins us uh, now and uh, tell us more about these dry conditions. Well, I actually had a chance to speak to uh, one of three fire forecasters in the Alberta Fire Centre down in Edmonton today, uh, Nick Nimchuk, who has 50 or 37 years experience, 50 years combined with all three meteorologists in fire forecasting. And he says this is the most intense fire situation or fire weather setup that he's seen in all of his years experience with so, uh, so the conditions being so dry and so hot. And uh, we've basically been seeing uh, hot, dry and windy for the past two weeks. These three meteorologists have been working uh, over the past uh, week and a half nonstop, giving the updates to uh, the uh, forecast, the fi firefighters and the province um, working around the clock, basically. And it was also interesting. He says it's almost more difficult than forecasting for tornadoes or a big snowstorm because that event is over in a matter of hours. But with fire forecasting, uh, you have to keep forecasting for weeks on end and he did say that really only rain uh, soaking rain will put this fire out and we don't have any of that in the forecast but at least these uh, cooler temperatures can uh, slow the fire down leading the uh, firefighters to steer steer the shivering? fire. I'm shivering. It's like four degrees right now. Yeah. Coldest it, it's been in weeks. We'll talk about the latest weather forecast and why it's so cold mm -hmm. right now uh, a little later on. Thank you very much Johanna. You're welcome.